Have religious organizations become anti-establishment as they defy government call to stop lad gatherings? And is decongestion prisons to create room for isolation centers for coronavirus a good idea? This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. Some religious centers went ahead to hold their normal Sunday services after the Lagos state government banned all gatherings with over 20 people in physical attendance. The government had taken this step in order to curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic that has cost over 14,000 deaths globally. Should the message from religious leaders be one of defiance at this time? Joining us in the studio are two gentlemen. Uh, we have Akbejoe Uluwale. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. And of course, uh, Sam Adeleke. Pleasure to have your company. Good evening. All right, let's start with the idea behind the um, less than 20 people. Most people seem to agree. Why do you think some churches at this time choose to flout this order? What should be government's reaction? Let's start with why. First, I think it's unfortunate that um, what religious um, preaches is that is um, adhering to the strict law either of God or of the government, or of an elder. If the government have said that, look, first that information that it was reduced now to 20 came very late. One, that when it was even 50, ordinarily I thought it could have been just no religious gathering. Saying 20, 50, again, you are giving room for amendments from, to maneuver. But however be that as it may, most of these religious, some of these religious houses, I saw them yesterday because on so many of the social media and some um, other sister television houses, most of them defied. And why, now we now begin to ask, why do they have to do that at this point in time? Are they not supposed to be part of the crusade for a safety Nigeria or for a safer Nigeria? You now begin to wonder if actually are they set to propagate the will of God or a personal will. Because a, pop, a very popular church, even though if not in Lagos, but in Ogun State, went ahead. If the auditorium is about 50,000. Well, well, we really would find, take time to extract this. But I want to ask you, Sam, what should be government's reaction to this? Because we do know that they were able to enforce the ban in certain areas. And then we have key um, uh, officials, like he mentioned, the um, uh, Koza, the Winners Chapel. Uh, we also had the, the very popular bishop, um, David Oyedepo, among others, holding normal service with a church capacity of over 50,000 people. What should government's reaction be at this time, or do you think they are too overwhelmed to really take action? I think what the government can do is simply moral suasion. They cannot in any way um, compel or um, forcefully shot any religious organization. Do you really believe in that in light of the reality now, of what we if, have? Even though, we, we, to be honest, we should not be overly emotional about this because it is simply, we are, we are simply saying, oh, can't we use common sense? That is logical for it not to be shot. Yes, we understand that. But if any of those churches that were um, invaded on Sunday decide to take the government to court, the government will lose, regardless of the level of, 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 of appeal they may, because it is not in the law. That is why... What we, is the responsibility? Take, if, if, you, if you're taking this stand, what, what is the responsibility of the church to the people that they serve, if it is not, aside from preaching the gospel... Yes, I, I, I totally understand that point of view, because now is we're that talking emotional, about morality really? and law. And yes, because we're, we're simply telling people that, oh... 
because there is an epidemic, there's a pandemic out there, please stay away from large gatherings. Please obey the law of the land. And to be honest, we are correct because if the church and the mosque, we are preaching that, oh, obey the authorities, be obedient, and then you are not obedient. That is, that's, that's another kettle of fish entirely. But we are saying now that what government can do is simply to engage these leaders, these people who have that level of influence, and not use force. Because it's a game of, 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 of um, influence here. The pastor is, is telling you that by the, by the grace of God, you will not be infected. You are blessed. Prophesying. And then the government is saying, no. Don't just do that alone. We can do that online. You can do that via the platforms that are available. You know, so it, 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 it's, it's about engaging people and letting them know that, oh, okay, I understand the responsibility you have. Because the, man, the, the bishop, to quote him, he said that in times like this, the church should not be shot. That it's like an hospital in which people need to still maintain fellowship in times like this. So they also have their own logical and spiritual backing for their actions. So you it, do it, realize it, that, that the there is... The state must be able to come to a compromise. You, you, you're, you're actually not saying... I mean, <laughs> you're on the fence on this. You are, well, you are neither here nor there. Really? We have a pandemic in our hands. What is the message... I'll come to you, sir. What is the message that our religious leaders should be passing at this critical time, knowing fully well that we have other countries where an imam, let's take that instance, right. went to church, I mean to the mosque, had over 40 people, and then the case of that country, I can't remember the country now, spiked overnight because one person chose to go to the mosque as against staying at home in this uncertain time. What be, message yes. so, should you know, they be sharing? To, to be, the message is clear, really. Stay back, stay safe, be socially distant, and let your personal hygiene level be, be, be on point. To be honest, that is the clear message. And we cannot in any way dissociate your know, from that. All right, let, that let me, what, what worries first, you most about you see, this What worries me most is the total disobedience to law by some of these uh, 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 religious cleric, more especially the Christian fold now. Because first I was expecting that on Friday that um, the, uh, Lagos State, um, the Lagos Central Mosque will probably want to have their service and probably want to have their worship and say, okay, with effect from Monday. But immediately that law was, uh, the, the, the immediately that pronouncement was made by the government. All the mosques where they have Jumat, all over Lagos, that I monitored, they all shut down. At the Lagos Central Mosque, there was an inscription that because of this, this government, blah, 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 that please stay at your home and, pre and have your uh, uh, um, Friday Jumat. And everybody, you see, to my greatest surprise, even some mosque that wake us up in the morning, I even realized that it is only the, probably the uh, imam that only give the uh, morning prayer and people even stay in their home. So if, the, if this, so I'm, and this is a plus to the Christ, to the Muslims, sincerely. But the Christian, I don't know what is wrong with our religion. I don't just know. We went out of band. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, I have had so many arguments that it's because it was not a law, that it was just a pronouncement. Are you saying that if the, that the government in the state or in the local government does not necessarily need a law? It's just a pronouncement. Except if you now start going into the legal, the, the deep into legal aspect, they will say, okay, which law backs you up? But I think a mere pronouncement by the governor should have, or, should have, or by the local government chairman should have helped this situation. Uh, I think and most of the churches that, do, that does this, they are, the, they are the place that some of these people, they felt they are more than, they are larger than even, larger than even the governor or wherever. Because these are some of the, these are some of the uh, um, overseers that go on a long entourage of escorts Okay, I mean, let's, let's not um, 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 get distracted from the issue. Uh, but let me ask you, I don't know why I want to ask you this question, but there are those, there are folks who still believe right. that the COVID-19 mm. is a hoax. What do you say to them? Uh, please look at the numbers and look at the news. This is real. It is not a hoax. And... Um, the numbers are rising on a daily basis. Now, why is this the case? It is simply because of the poor level of leadership we are having at the federal level. Because we know how things are done in this country. When the election is coming closer, we know how the machinery of government is deployed across board. 
We know how campaigns and publicity are done across board, in which you know that, oh, this is a season of elections. But we have a president who was even forced to announce to us yesterday and even uh, made blunders while doing that. So people are like, OK, what's happening here? We, we saw what the governor of Abia did, telling us that Abia State was mentioned in the Bible. You know, So we have a disconnect among the leadership in the land in which some are saying yes, some are saying no. So until we have that united front from the elites, People will still keep doubting this, but to be honest, as we all, as we all say, this is real. This is not a joke. Okay, still staying with messages. I want to come back to you because you. I don't think you've actually answered <laughs> that question. You skipped come it. On. President of CAN. Yes, um, uh, Samson Samson. Ayokun, mm, um, mm. On Sunday, gave a sermon. Let me see if I can find some of what he said. He said that arrogance of humans against God and constituted authority was responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. He went on to say that there is need for mankind to have a change of heart from their wickedness. Again, I ask you, is this the kind of messages that should be promulgated and sent to the people at this time, particularly people as prominent as men like the very reverend Felicity, you, you isolated the part where you also said that people should maintain personal hygiene, wash your hands, stay safe and all that. See, the job of a pastor is to preach. He's the president of Khan. He has a congregation and he is a conveyor of hope. He is supposed to let people that know that this is more what like hope God me. tells because us. Because what it because, sounded like oh, was... So uh, okay. every, everyone, now please note, there are conspiracy theories across the world. No, this so is not this about is not in, in, which, in which people are saying theory. that uh, it was a lab that was blah, 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 blah from one and all that. A, a, a man of God will tell you what God has told him, unless we are now disputing his calling. The imam and the chief um, uh, missionary for, for, for uh -huh. Nasfat, we also I, say I, what I, he was I told. something? Because what, the question, what he said about yes. arrogance of humans that caused this pandemic. I want to hear your thoughts. He has this. not said God told him. <laughs> you understand? Because I, 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 I read it over and over again. He didn't say God told him that this. He was just saying that, OK, it is not normally that what, what they will say is that if anything happened, they will say, yes, it is because, because of your disobedience to the words of God, because you are not following, to the, you are not following the will of God uh, um, to later. They will always come up with this God, God, God. But in the simple truth in the first place, let me tell you, he is saying it from the, from the Christian angle. The same thing a Muslim person will come up and say it from the, but from a normal angle, as far as I'm concerned, there was, look, either you worship God or you don't worship God. There are times you will seek and there is time you will, you, 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 you will be well. If at this point in time, we have a pandemic that has been declared an epidemic, you understand? I think what everybody should do is that this, it has nothing to do with religion this time. On your religious angle, yes, you'll be praying, but let us listen to what the government have said and let us follow what the government have said. This is, it is as simple as that. It is not coming up to say that no, that you don't have a right to do this, that we have a right to do that. I mean, this is the time that we must all, there must be a concerted effort. Let me, let, let me flip this conversation on its head and also act as a devil's advocate right now. Um, there are those who say, that the manifestation of this pandemic is God's design. It's not. Like the pastors are saying, and they are citing the fact that the air, the, I mean, the pollution level has reduced since there were reduced activities of human beings, that we are the ones that are polluting the environment. They also went on to talk about um, that the almost total stop to insurgency and um, terrorism. These are what they are citing as confirming what these pastors um, are saying. Let, let me ask you, what do you say to that? I'll put the same question to you. See, as far as I'm concerned, this has nothing to do with um, either gods or whatever. You see, it's just like when, it's just like sometimes when you are when when you are when you are working, if business is not going, it's not because you're not worshiping God enough. It's just sometimes when you when you fast and pray and you see find out that the thing, the same thing you are praying for is not working. It's not because God hates you at all. This is this has nothing to do with God. We, you see, just at everything, we are always looking for excuses to cover our lapses. Sam, what do you say to this? I am a Christian and I believe in God. I believe strongly that what is happening right now in the world is a strong message 
from God to the world. Even the United States, which is the number one world power as we speak at the moment, declared a national day of prayer. We have seen countries like Canada, we've seen countries like Italy praying. These are countries with advanced healthcare systems. These are industrialized nations. These are, these are nations who have been brought to their knees and who have sought the face of God because this is... They are this, praying this is... isolated in their homes. They're doing teleconferencing. Yes. Presidents and every other person of are course. listening. I am not Why saying is that they are coming going together. To the but the question you ask that uh, there, there is God in all of this. There is there no, something no. which is beyond the, the physical here? And my, my, my point is, yes, it is. So even though the, the, the Khan chairman who was giving this message could have done it online, and I think he did, actually, was it? He didn't have a fiscal congregation, but we cannot in any way overlook the consequences of this across board. We have seen how the world is on a recess. Everyone is paused on a state of limbo right now. Things are, are, are getting reshaped. Things that you think that cannot be cancelled are being cancelled. You know, um, traditions are being, are, being, are being upstaged right now. So I, I believe that nothing just happens. People have been saying that this is a time that has never happened before in the world, in the world history. So this is a unique moment for us to really think and look that, oh, this is actually beyond us. Because across the world, the feeling and the, and the, and the, and the siege is the same. You All know. right, Let, let's um, move on and continue with other developments <laughs> yeah. um, in Lagos State. Um, still on Sunday, the Lagos Island, a uh, mainland, I beg your pardon, uh, local government environmental health team dispersed worshippers. Um, like I said earlier, they were, dis um, they were enforcing the uh, minimal yeah. gathering of uh, 50 uh, faithfuls. And not uh, only in the church, though. They also went to some clubs. They also went to some social parties. gatherings. We saw some news about um, disrupting parties. My question is, though, um, some were arrested. Should they be arresting at this time, considering the fact that, you know, the prisons right now are congested and you're introducing new unknown uh, variants <laughs> to the people that are already there? First, what is the... What is, the, what is the stand of the government when it consigns disobedience of law? It's, to be, it's, it's arrest. So I don't think the government, either the police or whoever that have arrested, I don't think they've gone, I don't, I don't think they've done anything wrong. The reason why you arrest is because of that fact that you have done something wrong. And that is why you must be no, arrested. But, my but question is, actually, now, it's not about the rightness or the wrongness of the arrest. I'm saying, considering that we're dealing with a pandemic, yes. should they be arresting people yes, con now? Yes, considering the fact that we have an issue at hand. And also, if you are going to arrest these people, you are going to put them in, 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 perhaps in a room that you call prison or whatever, or detention facility. You see, you could be also be helping this virus to spread more. I think what they could have done is to seal up this place and charge them to court. The IGP not, has actually... Not, not to arrest. Because what we should do is that we must try as much as possible at this point in time to reduce the number of people we clamp into our jail. Yeah, if you just oppose this to the IGP's um, caution that people should minimize social calls to um, the police station as well as uh, not every offense the, um, should be uh, people should be arrested uh, for every uh, offense um, um, should they really be doing that at this time I think that any organization either a club or religious, religious body that is flouting the rules just go and seal up the place you don't need to arrest anyone this is because like I said earlier the, there is no legal basis for this. I, I believe that at this time, the Federal House of Representatives and the Senate and even the local House of Assembly should be passing laws to, to enable the government, you know, take some legal actions that will back these um, efforts to contain this pandemic. Yeah. So because right now, you can't just make a pronouncement and be talking. These are just moral situations. These are just pronouncements. Right now, there should be accelerated hearings. Bills should be drafted. Do we drafted have time to make right laws now. quickly? Do we have time Why to not? make laws we've seen at the, this time? We, we, we've seen the Senate and the House of pass laws in two days in this country, so even it's on possible. This, on a, even on a day. In, in a day. So I believe right now, we, we, in, in this one, two weeks, the House of Assembly should be sitting and passing laws to enable you know, money being released, to enable people being thrown into jail or being, or being um, um, sued if they disobey the laws you, you that are being... I know, don't know. Is it, is it just me or we, we are missing the fact that this is an unknown 
situation. We are adjusting as we go. This is we're not the first country to experience this. But other countries are making efforts right now. Current as we speak right now, the the the, 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 the American Senate is debating a law to Relief pass funding. You get two two trillion dollars stimulus into the uh, into the American economy. So the question is, what is the Nigerian government doing? Nigerian Senate, House of Rep, and even the Lagos House of Assembly. So th these are things that should be done, not just talking and just making Perhaps various you know, final assembly. thoughts on this. Final thoughts on this. We need to wrap up this segment. Final thoughts of this is that religious leaders, religious own, should learn to obey laws from the constituted authority. I guess you mean directives, because it's not yet law at this moment. Yeah, of, OK, yeah. It, directives, of course, they should learn. Because if, you are, if they are doing the same way, if they're not arresting anybody there in the, in, in the church, then you have no right to come and arrest me if I'm in the beach. All right. For me, I want to call on the legislature at the federal and state levels to get to work, and in the next two days, pass and enact laws that will back this pandemic efforts. Thank you, gentlemen, so far. Thank I'll you. I'll be back with you in a bit. We'll just go on a quick break, and when we return, we're talking a strategy. A House of Representative member believes we should take to make space for patients who test positive to the COVID-19. That is up for discussion after this break.